Hi, this is Bob Shimoniak, Superintendent of Fruitport Community Schools. The following presentation gives detailed information concerning the Fruitport Community Schools bond proposal that will be on the November 8 ballot. As you can see on this slide, we had a rather large group of parents, citizens, and staff who, back in November of 2013, began the process of studying our facilities, which, over time, led to the development of the District Facilities Master Plan, which is essentially a building replacement plan that goes out 50 years. More on that plan in a moment, but first you can see some of the folks who started this process. Over the years, we've had more than 60 people involved in the development of the Facilities Master Plan. So this process entailed a thorough study of our district facilities and these two main issues came to be the driving force behind the development of our facilities master plan. First is the fact that our old buildings, as our old buildings get older, they will eventually cost more for upkeep than the district can afford. The other main issue dealt with education and the concern that our buildings did not offer modern learning spaces that our students will need to best prepare them for their future. Case in point is our robotics team. When Fruitport High School was built, robots were a thing of science fiction, as seen here by the 1960s Lost in Space robot on the left. But over the past few years, robotics has become an important program in schools throughout the country, and our robotics team has really flourished. That is, it. That is a portion of our team in the upper right-hand corner, and their robot is on the lower left. Unfortunately, the space they have to do their work is inferior to other school districts in West Michigan, and that handicaps efforts to expand the program. In this respect, school isn't just about increasing achievement, but also increasing opportunities to work in learning spaces that will foster skill development to make our graduates competitive in the local labor market. This slide shows just how disadvantaged our students are at a regional level with respect to modern learning spaces, with only North Muskegon and Muskegon Public having high schools older than ours. This slide also shows the degree of millage investment communities in West Michigan have made in their schools, with Fruitport being dead last. Here's a different way of looking at where Fruitport ranks with respect to the millage rate. Schools collect for bond debt. Note that the proposed 3.9 mills we are asking for still has us at the lower end of the regional millage rates. I've been asked the difference between a millage and a bond issue. Essentially, a millage is a tax that is collected annually and that money is spent annually for a voted upon purpose. The library or public safety millages fall into this category. A bond proposal is a millage where bonds are sold so that the recipient, in this case the school, gets a large amount of money up front, and then the millage is collected over time to pay off the bond debt. Everything on this chart reflects millage charged to pay off bond debt, and therefore shows only each community's investment in their facilities. The three mills of bond debt Fruitport is currently paying off is from bond proposals in 1997, 2003, and 2010, which were used to add classrooms at Shetler and Beach, along with various building updates like new roofs and boilers. This three mills of debt will be paid off in 2028. Remember that point. It is important to note that school funding in the state of Michigan has been structured so that local communities are responsible for the major updates and replacement of school facilities through bond proposals such as the one we are asking for on November 8. As far as actually running the school, the state provides funding in the form of a per pupil allowance. This year the per pupil allowance is a little over $7,500. So you take the per pupil allowance and multiply that by the number of students a district has and that is the amount of money the school district has to run things including paying salaries, running school buses, paying utilities, etc. Most of the money the state uses to pay the per pupil allowance comes from the state sales tax. A lot of people ask about the lottery money which is supposed to help fund schools but the lottery only makes up $500 of the $7,500 per pupil allowance. So let's go back to the need for this bond proposal by looking at the age of our buildings, which is shown on this slide. It is important to remember that the facilities master plan is essentially a building replacement plan. As stated, given the ages of our buildings, there will come a time in the not too distant future when it will cost more for building upkeep than the district can afford. 
thus the plan to replace them. The facilities master plan starts with replacement of the high school, even though it is not our oldest building, because it is the flagship for the district and gets the most community use. This slide shows the facilities master plan in action. You can see that the longer we postpone implementation of the facilities master plan, the older our buildings will get before replacement. And again, the older our buildings get, the more they will cost for upkeep and the less they are able to support modern educational needs. Note that the order of building replacement is subject to change. The key to making the facilities master plan affordable is found in this slide. Should this bond proposal pass, the bond debt millage rate in Fruitport will go up to 6.9 mills. As stated, the current three mills we collect will be paid off in 2028. The state allows you to restructure bond debt every 10 years. 10 years from this election takes us almost to 2028, when the current debt falls off. At that time, the district could vote for a zero mill increase bond issue to keep the millage rate at 6.9 mills and use the proceeds of the bond proposal to replace the next building on the replacement schedule. Then every 10 years, the district could restructure the bond debt and for a zero mill increase afford the next building replacement. So again, new buildings does not mean new taxes. Once we get to the 6.9 mills every 10 years, we can restructure the bond debt and get a new bond issue for zero mill increase and afford the replacement of the next building on the replacement schedule. This slide describes what the 3.9 mills would afford, which is a replacement of the 1950s portion of the high school while connecting the 1998 classroom pod and gym to the new construction along with approximately $2 million toward priority needs in the rest of the buildings and the replacement of some of our oldest buses. Here you can see a sample cost to taxpayers. Note that the senior citizens or homeowners with a disability and some low-income homeowners may be eligible for a homestead tax exemption. You can go to our website where we have a calculator you can use to determine your eligibility. Note that the millage would be charged against all property in the school district, whether it is homestead or non-homestead, at the same 3.9 mil rate. The website also has an explanation on how to calculate the cost of this bond proposal for the typical property owner. Finally, there's a great deal of residential and commercial development taking place in our community. The way this bond proposal is structured, as new properties pay toward this millage, the amount everyone pays toward the bond debt would over time decrease, or the debt could be restructured and the bond debt paid off faster. Proceeds from the casino would not enter into the reduction of bond, of bond debt, but would instead be used to enhance educational and athletic programming for our students. But the commercial development around the casino would pay toward the bond debt just like any other commercial property in our school district. Here's a proposed view of the new high school. It would be a two-story structure with a new auditorium to the right rear. The tall light blue structure to the left rear is the location of a future pool should the community pass additional millage to pay for it. The pool is not part of this bond issue request. To close, here is some animation giving you a sense of the impact of the new high school would have on parking and traffic flow.